Uh, 40k badcast in the chat says chapter tactic tactical cowardice. Uh, that sounds um, like not a fan of the Raven Guard. Disparaging talk. No, no, it's um, yes. <laughs> You've you rendered Jim Gallagher speechless. This monster. 40K I, I disapprove badcast. of this sentiment. Strongly disapprove. It's not tactical cowardice. It is tactical <laughs> uh, not getting shot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 57 of the 40k Badcast. My name is Sir Daniel of the Noble House of Boyd, and I'm joined by my wizened sage, Crumbleforth McLarper. <laughs> okay, the problem is, you introduce yourself... I guess Crumbleforth would be like a good hobbit name or tiefling name if we're going to keep going with this sort of Sir Daniel of House Boyd sort of medieval aesthetic. <laughs> but you're the one who goes to Ren Fairs, not me. I was supposed to go to Ren Fair this weekend with Peter, actually, but uh, I uh, I can't necessarily make it with all the other horrible bullshit going on in my life. I want to go to a Ren Fair with Peter. I do, too. I told him to mail me back a leg of mutton and I will have it then. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. All right, listeners. Check this out. It's we're recording on a day we don't usually record on. Uh, it's a it's a Friday and it's Correct. after work. Yes. So uh, I don't know about you, Campbell, but for me, ooh ooh, a little bit of foley work in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> There's some extreme Friday energy going on right here. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, uh, this is gonna be a really stupid show. And I'm. Uh, it is. We're just preparing ourselves I'm for it. I'm very excited too. for it. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's let's catch up on the things that we did since uh, when was the last time we recorded last week? About week a month. Well, the last time we did like a regular ass episode was a month ago. Yeah, yeah. We gotta. We actually have to stop doing that. Yes. Uh, hopefully, horrible things stop happening to us. <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, so uh, I just want to talk quickly about how my body betrayed me once again. <laughs> Speaking of horrible things, all right, keep going with the summer of bullshit. So I, Monday morning, Monday, mon Monday morning, I was, uh, got out of the shower, put on my clothes, and mm -hmm. put on my shoes, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I felt, you know what? These shoes are kind of loose. I better tie them so they're tight, okay. so they do not mm -hmm. fall off of my feet while I walk. Good plan, good plan. So I did that, and then I went to stand up. And immediately threw my back out. And listeners, motherfucker, old people will say, old people will say things like threw my back out. Uh, but what that means is I pulled a muscle in the middle of my fucking back. And for the entire week, every single move and breath and everything was pure agony. And I haven't slept all that much this week, again, because of the back thing. That's extremely cool. I'm very not jealous of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's super great. Uh, this is the second time I've done this by doing something innocuous. Last year, I did it picking up a cup of tea. Mm, must have been a heavy cup of tea. It was not. It was a regular <laughs> cup of tea. Mm. So yeah, that's uh, things are great. Things are things are great. Things are going well. However, mm -hmm. I prepared for this. Uh, I prepared for this episode by drinking a cup of tea and not hurting myself in the process. Okay. So I was caffeinated, but then I was like, you know, it would be great for a Friday evening recording session, a beer. Then I had one of those, and now I'm on my second. One often invites a second. Uh, I was building some Ikea furniture just about 30 minutes ago, so I was helping myself similarly to an alcoholic beverage. That sounds wonderful. Ikea is like Legos, but far more boring. Uh, here's the thing. I'm getting kind of, I'm getting sort of a satisfaction out of it. Like, all right, we have a bed that we have moved like four times and a friend of mine also has the same bed. And at this point, I've taken apart and rebuilt that thing so many times I could do it blindfolded. Like, you know, that thing in all the army movies, they're like, oh, this guy could field strip an M16 blindfolded. Like that is me with a specific piece of Ikea furniture. <laughs> it's a very particular set of skills. But if you're in need of them, I'm your man. That's hilarious. Whenever I get Legos, I always end up getting like the the cityscape Legos where I end mm -hmm. up with like a like a, a, a an ambulance or like a drive through coffee shop. Yep. Because I have no imagination. Oh, well, see, all that stuff got turned into engines of war when I was a kid. So the transition from Legos into Warhammer stuff was easier than the transition from this segment into us actually talking about Warhammer shit. I like to imagine my Lego minifigs 
all mm-hmm. have like rewarding jobs and happy home lives. Oh, no, most of mine were conscripted. Oh, they fought the army men. Oh. It was a long, arduous, never ending war. Well, speaking of battles, mm-hmm. the battle between ska and metal who rages on. So yes, it I, does. The <laughs> opening shots have been fired. I don't know about you, listener, theoretical listener to this program, because there's only one of you. Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we have christened our next Badcast Beatdown, which will happen next year at Nova. Uh, and it's Badcast Beatdown 2020 Ska versus Metal. And naturally, Shaboy, DZ, is on the team Ska. In the ska mm-hmm. band, if you will, while mm-hmm. Crumbles <laughs> McFumbles over here is 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 just one of the many masked faces in a Slipknot band. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who has more members in in the band, Slipknot or your average ska band? <laughs> Everyone is on stage. Uh, everyone has an instrument. All I have Just to one do. One side's wearing pork pie masks or pork pie hats, and one side's wearing <laughs> stupid sacks over their faces. It's the same shit. There's two drummers in Slipknot. No one needs two drummers. You know who needs two drummers? A band with three trumpeters and a trombone and a bassist. Oh God, what a what a terrible type of music that metal is. <laughs> What a share of wretchedly white genres of music we listen to. We are extremely white dudes. Okay, well, let's let's move on. Let's actually get to our show, uh, unless you want to digress a little more. No, I am extremely good. Okay, well, let's go move on to the aspects where we talk about what's on our hobby radar. Mm-hmm. And Crumbo, since Nova, mm-hmm. I've actually had like a lot of hobby enthusiasm. Yeah. But it doesn't show in how much I've painted. I have uh, painted most of, well, I'm, I'm on my, the finishing up the first highlight layer on Intercessors 35 through 39. <laughs> I can only imagine your unbridled enthusiasm for inter- the Intercessors 35 intercourse? through 39. Intercourse? Intercor- intercoursers. No, Intercoursers come in the next codex. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a D, all right, so Anne's first D&D experience was like, a shitty boyfriend being like, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. And it was like a oh fan made sex module. And she's like, this sucks and I hate it. And I feel like intercourse is our unit in the 40K equivalent of that. <laughs> Although there's no sort of, uh, sort of, um, what's the right term here? Canonized D20 module sort of thing you can sort of do for 40K at the moment. If that's what your homebrew campaign is like, please don't tell me about it. Okay. Anyway, Dan, what else have you been working on? In Primaris Intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot less funny than either of us think it is. Oh, I'm a beer and a half in, my dude. Anything's mm-hmm. funny at this point. I'm halfway through one beer, so I'm like a beer and a half in for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Intercessors, 35 through 39. It's another three Power Fist Sergeants, and then two Intercessors with the Auxiliary Grenade Launchers to okay. go in the squads that came from the Dark Imperium box. So Power Fists, not Thunder Hammers. Yes, Power Fists. Is that just because the bits you have at hand or a sort of preference? Uh, preference and bits, both, okay. I guess. I, like Thunder Hammers, I... Ooh, this is... Here's, here's a fucking take for you. I don't ooh, here think we go. Thunder Hammers look cool, generally. Oh. So, hmm. like the... I, I, I love the aesthetic of the Power Fist. Yeah, it's classic. And the Thunder Hammer, like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a couple of good ones out there. Like, what's his nuts? Uh, uh, Lysander. He's got a cool mm-hmm. one. He has a great Thunder Hammer. But the Thunder Hammer bits I have, and I do have them. One, they're metal. Ooh. And two, they just look kind of janky and, yeah, and old. Probably, so I was like, because they're metal. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not going to use these. So instead, I used the, uh, the Power Fist that you sent me. Okay, well, that, that's nice. I mean, as a metal fan, I also like things that are janky and old. But <laughs> how do you feel about how do you feel about a power fist being held, holding a thunder hammer? Oh, now we're talking. That's like strength thirty two. Strength thirty two. My math is correct. And damage D three D three thirty four. Nice. Okay. That yeah, makes sense. We're making sense Sweet. over here. Yeah. Now the variance in D thirty four. I mean the upside. Think of the upside. But what if you roll a one? Then you're well and truly fucked. <laughs> it's like 2.75%. 
Okay, well, that's what I'm working on right now. I haven't, uh, I mean, I actually have gotten a lot of work on them done since Nova. It just takes me a long time to paint, so that's oh, yeah. that's that's it. And, uh, you know, this, this whole back thing for me uh, this week, like I've been pretty much capped at an hour a night before my back starts mm. to literally seize up. Yeah. So I I've been taking it easy so far, but I'll have them, I'll have them done soon. Uh, what about you, my dude? I've seen a couple of pictures of the things that you've done. Yeah, I have been. Again, this is a month's worth of progress. So excuse me for talking for the next ten fucking minutes about what toys I've been painting. So let's see. The first thing I did was I did get some of the new apocalypse movement trays just because I want to use those sort of things just to speed up things like deployment and so on. And I did get to use them in a the game, which I'll talk about later. And they were rather nice. But I finished the aggressors and the chaplain that I yep. was working on last regular episode. Yep, 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 yep. I like how I, you did your chaplain somewhat similar in mindset to mine, that yours is very gaudy. Oh, yeah. No, he's extra. Yeah. So is mine. Like, my bright red with a ton of gold. Yours is mm-hmm. bright red and black and white checkers and a ton of gold. Yes, because why stop at just one? Yeah. Well, I try to kind of channel that sort of like semi blanchetsu semi old school sort of vibe through everything I paint in this army, which is one of the reasons why everything takes me for fucking ever. But also one you, of the reasons why I think it looks cool. I'm going to I'm going to take a train to Boston and kick you in the shins if you talk about things taking you forever. I have had nothing to do at work this week, so it's all relative. <laughs> I have to go to work and just be there sometimes. We're doing nothing. I would love to be at home painting during that time. No, it, I can only recommend it. <sighs> so aside from those things, I also built only, and painted. I'm, I'm only bitter because I'm envy. This. Envy. I'm envy. I, I'm envious. <laughs> you are the personification of envy. It's me, envy. I'm only bitter because this is a double IPA. So... I built and painted oh. five reavers. Oh no! Oh, we're oh. just gonna we're just gonna walk right past that, huh? We're just uh-huh. gonna we're just gonna pretend like that enormous dog turd that you <laughs> you found on the sidewalk <laughs> and then like gifted to me. We're just gonna pretend that it didn't happen. It's the shotgun approach to jokes, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it's what assault two and is stronger the closer I am to you. Well, at least it's plentiful. Hence hey, that's a Necromunda too. joke. Only, Ooh. only, uh, you probably didn't even get it. Only our friend Jules no, gets I didn't. it. No, only <laughs> 90s kids will remember. <laughs> Fucking back in the room. What's up? Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please continue. <laughs> no, you're not sorry, but I will continue anyway. I built and painted five Reavers. It's been sorry. a while since I built multipose models. So I was kind of like, huh, how do I do this? So I have like three or four sets of paired arms that looks god awful that I just left off them and it foregoing with the ones I went with. So I have like a chainsword on the sergeant because they can take a knife and a carbine anyway and a knife and a chainsword do the same fucking thing stupidly. So I went with the chainsword because it gave me an opportunity to do a bunch of checks and fun colors and look more brutal and savage and reaver esque. But I'm getting kind of sick of things that take as long as they did to paint because while you were just saying it's like, oh, yeah, look at this fucking guy getting a thousand miles done a day. It's because I just didn't have much to do. So I was spending like eight hours per dude. And then I decided to spend eight hours on a dude and paint the adept gun lieutenant <laughs> who I have who I have dubbed Volpe Primo. Oh, no. Named after the named after the fucking sausage you mailed me. Oh, God. So um, Volpe Primo will be going alongside Volpe's Volpe oh, in their crusade across the stars. Oh, no, I'm going to have to do so much more editing now. <laughs> I am it. solely here to make things difficult for you. Oh, fuck. I also built the Empire General and the Standard Bearer, like the old school one from Warhammer Fantasy to go with my old Empire Army because I played some uh, Age of Sigmar games. But they also came with this cute little Griff Hound, <laughs> which the box shows kind of glued to the base and it looks super crowded. So I just put him on his own little 20 millimeter base and I painted him mostly with contrast paints. Uh-huh. Uh, I just did like white undercoat, contra- like three different contrast paints and then a line highlight and he was basically done. And that was really fun to work with. Hey, good job, I I think combining the two is really where you're going to get good results, because like whenever you see I I actually watched a uh, part of a video tutorial earlier today by some dude like he dog or something. (laughs) I watched watched the first 30 seconds of a tutorial video today, so I'm an expert. All right. It's a 25 minute video, Dan. (laughs) I don't have all day. Some people don't have to work. You just spent the last fucking 10 minutes talking about how, yes, in fact, you do have all day. (laughs) I have all day, but I don't want to have all day doing this. <laughs> but even there, it's a it's a combination of contrast paints and regular line highlighting. And I think that's where you're going to get the really good results. 
Because then going with just one thing, like you're going to do okay with just the contrast paints, but when you mix the two styles, like if you mix airbrushing and regular brushing or whatever, that's where you're going to get the really good stuff. Now, did you, uh, you put this mini griff on a, on a square base? I did put them on a square base because my entire empire army is on square bases, and I'll be goddamned if I'm going to rebase like 300 state troops. Yeah. Fuck the man. Yeah, fuck the man. And also, most of the people I play with play square bases anyway, so who gives a shit? Ooh. But he's done. And I also started to get some work on some round-based fantasy models, which are Zarva- Zarbaj's Jits from Shadespire. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, it's pronounced Shadespire. <laughs> you better put Tarantella behind that, too. <laughs> and these guys are a ton of fun. Like, anybody... I remember a few years ago, there were a lot of people complaining that digital sculpted models don't have a lot of character compared to old metal models or hand-sculpted stuff. And I would say at this point, you are full of shit. These are so characterful and so fun. <laughs> You're full of shit, and fuck you, you complete garbage human, for your dumbass opinions, and I hope you die. I'm sorry, but some Cable opinions McLaughlin, can be wrong. September 20th, 2019. <laughs> Way to give up the ghost when we're recording this again. I, I like guess. to dr- I like to drop in when we're recording it. You do it almost every episode, I, and I, have I do not it on had purpose. Worry about it. Well, like usually, usual podcasts kind of try to bury that lead. And no, I'm happy I like to. Just t- kind of I like. To, it I like it out. to be like like people it's fucking temporal. Like it's like people know when it's happening, so they can be like, oh, oh, Friday afternoon. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was fucking around, and just be like, oh, yeah. oh and the fucking dudes are fucking around too. Yeah, and your your grandchildren's generation will be thinking, where was my grand where are my grandparents when they're listening to Badcast episode fifty <laughs> seven? You know what? If a grandchild of any of our listeners ever listens to one of our podcasts, I will be very surprised. I would be surprised, honored, and a little worried. All right. So you've you've managed to finish a quite impressive amount of things. Right. Uh, this time around, uh, I just wanted to quickly mention before we move on to games played that uh, it counts on the ICs, so it counts for us too. But I bought some stuff. Ooh, what you got? So I bought, I pre ordered. Ooh. The Raven Guard Codex. Oh, me, oh, my. And Captain Shrike. I guess Chapter yep. Master Shrike now. K Van Shrike. Kevin. And. <laughs> no, he's going to punch a hole in my wall. <laughs> That's Kyle. And. I bought some more Illuminators. And I say that no, about it. I say no, that with a frog face because I said I wasn't going to buy any more things until I made a dent in my backlog. But mm-hmm. then I learned what the Raven Guard chapter trait is. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, fuck, I need more Illuminators. And I, I saw them and I liked the models. Even though I hate painting camo, I'm, I'm back, baby. <laughs> You're back in it. I'm back in it. So, yeah. All right, games played. Yeah. Please. Rega- oh, okay. Regale us with your games that you've played. So I played two games of 40K, both 2,000 points. I use the same list in both, which is just basically a ultramarine death ball centered around Marnius, Caligar, Banner Bear, and, his, and a lieutenant. Doesn't really matter what else you got because they're all rerolling everything. Yeah. Uh, I played one game against Cody's Dark Eldar. We Ooh. played six objectives uh, where one is randomly worth more and one is randomly worth less. Mm-hmm. And while I'll I'll, uh, give away a spoiler here, I did get owned by them, but I also kind of owned myself with a train (laughs) setup where I left one side really built up and one side less so Uh kind of prescribed by the city streets of my stupid tablescapes board. Yeah. And after the game, Cody was like, well, I'm not going to help you win when I asked him if if the train looked good. (laughs) Uh, So he raced or he raced most of his army down one street, which kind of flooded my target priority while my dis- while his disintegrators just went along to kill yep. way too much of my shit. Ooh. I still have no idea how to deal with disintegrators. And I dealt with the first wave just in time for the second wave to come in and ruin my day, which he knew. He was like, oh, you think you've got me? Well, here comes round two. And I'm like, shit, I'm out of tricks and out of command points and out of dudes mostly. Nothing personnel, now, kid. N- except they teleported in front of me. <laughs> now, here's the cool part. Even in the game where I get fucking punked, where I lose, I actually, I almost won it at one point. Even in a game where things don't necessarily go my way, Marnius Calgar still fucking rules. Yeah. So his Archons both charge. Calgar shoots them on on the over on Overwatch yeah. and like 
plinks one, knocks away his two-up invulnerable save. Nice. And the lieutenant who he charges knocks off the other invulnerable nice. save with a frag grenade. Yes. Uh, Calgar punks the Archon. The lieutenant punks the other Archon. Yes. Then a pair of Succubi charge Calgar next. Calgar punks one of the Succubi. The other one almost dies before running away, which is as far as I'm, as far as I gather, the Dark Eldar, like, reason to tear. Extremely and, wise. And then, uh, and only after... Calgar and my lieutenant kill three of his commanders does he shoot them to death and turn five ends with me on the primary objective and my one other model basically on the other objective and then the game goes till turn six and he wins oh, but I I, no. I could have won I had I had enough points I could have won or maybe drawed drawn whatever if the game ended on turn five uh, Drew it was Drew there it is uh, but still, it was a good game. It's always it's always fun to hang out with Cody, even if I get thrashed by him two times out of three. It's now, not true. It's no, do you have something to say, Dan? Please not, share it with class. It's not true. Oh, oh sorry, Drew's, I didn't say anything. Just go ahead. No, it's Drew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my second game was against Spencer. Uh, Spencer Connell, you just played yeah. in Nova. Yeah. This was sort of this sort of a prep game for me for Nova. Uh, again, these are these games were both before Nova and all this bullshit <laughs> happened in my life. That's how far back Jesus we're talking with this Christ. shit, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been yeah, yeah. a minute. Yeah, it's uh, been a so, it's been a fucking summer, huh? Yeah, it has been a hell of a summer, and I'm very happy for it to be over. So, uh, Spencer, like any good friend of ours, reads Goonhammer and read the article about the new White Dwarf Maelstrom mission. So we played that one. He went out and got the White Dwarf, like, the day after he read it, and we did the thing with the deck building and everything. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, yeah, it was a lot of fun. He played Tyranids and I played my Ultramarines again, again, the same list. And although I deployed like a dummy and set up my whole army right up front at the edge of my deployment, then got seized on Bad and move. charged turn one. If the Battle of Cold Steel Ridge and the whole Battle from a Crag went like this, the Ultramarines would still have a first company. <laughs> yes. Primaris Assault, dude. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's fucking real. All right. So not only Primaris Assault. But the defensive fire stratagem, the one that lets uh, two squads support the ones getting charged, the Ultramarines get, yeah. meant that, excuse me, although he had an overambitious, I, I wouldn't even say it's overambitious, I'd say it's regular ambitious charge of 30 Gaunts and 20 Gene Stealers charging my dudes turn one. I just got a fuckload of fire. Everyone's around Marnius, Calgar, and a lieutenant. So they're re-rolling all kinds of dice. And of course, I'm doing the um, supporting fire with my fucking repulsor, which just means all the burnt in the world yeah. is going in there, too. Yeah. And he, I get all this fire off, which cuts his numbers down a bunch. I then interrupt with one of my intercessor squads, yes. which meant I had like 21 attacks with a power fist in there, too, with, you know, angels of death and the yes. banner and everything. And while he did kill one half intercessor squads and my librarian, which meant he got to use that uh, fucking feeder tendril strategy, which is hilarious. Yeah. I immediately wiped out a lot of them. Calgar intervened and just punched like eight gene stealers dead. Fuck yeah. And I just wiped out turn one, most of his 150 bugs and the swarm lord. Holy uh, shit. And then, yeah, turned. Yeah. The swarm lord was supposed to duel Calgar and I just shot it. <laughs> For what's worth, <laughs> fucking, Calgar uh, shot it too. You Indiana Jones them. I Indiana Jones it, but it's like there is one dude with a sword and like 45 Indiana Joneses and one Indiana Jones is also a tank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that one dude has four swords. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is true. Uh, so it only is fitting that there's 40 as 40 as many Indiana Joneses. <laughs> OK, sure. So turn two, he brings one of the mobs of Gaunt's back Shot with the uh, <laughs> it never ends. I'm sorry. But the the mob of Gaunts comes back. They fail their charge. He does kill the, the repulsor with his uh, hive guard, but it's close enough to his patriarch who is about to charge that I'm able to play Venge the Machine Spirit oh. and onslaught Gatlin Cannon the patriarch away. Nice. <laughs> that is my new favorite strategy because one thing I can count on is my shit dying. Yep. And if my shit can die and then hit back real good, it's it's going to go well for me. Yeah. So he. Yeah. yeah, he sat some yeah. the rest of his gaunts on central objective, which meant I could just focus them down even if he scored some points. And I cleaned up most of his stuff by the end of turn two and we called it. Uh, so it was a very one sided game. But playing with Spencer is always a pleasure. He's such a fun opponent. And I'm really looking forward to getting another game with him soon. Yeah, he's a great guy. Both yeah, of those Connell brothers. Yeah, they're a good pair. Good people. I, th I think 
I remember them saying they're coming to Adepticon this year, so Ooh, that would be that'll be a lot of fun. Very good to see them there. That's sick. I imagine their events and our events overlap quite a bit. Yeah, don't you love it when the Space Marine like battle pile actually can like shrug off melee from another army and like hit back and do something? Well, like I was playing a game against Cody a few months ago, and he was and I was like visibly frustrated, and we're talking about it afterwards, and he was like, "It's because Marines aren't doing what you picture them doing in your head." You picture them like gunning things down and fighting things off rather well, and they're just not doing it. Yeah. And this game, they did exactly what they do in my head. Nice. Like that is the, the movie that plays in my head is the game that basically happened. Uh, beyond this, I did have two games of Age of Sigmar versus Dylan. I won't get too in depth because this is ostensibly a 40K show, but we tried the new meeting engagement, which I sincerely think will be introduced to 40K at some point. It's it's kind of like the old fifth edition Dawn of War where things roll on over the course of the game, but it's a smaller field and you're limited in the size of your army and you bring on like three chunks, which is kind of cool. And some of the missions reward you spreading those chunks out in different ways because you might end up with your rear guard coming in first and you'll be a disadvantage to score points or whatever. So I took my empire. He took his undead. Both games were very quick and I took victory in both of them because my esoteric bullshit army has a ton of weird rules interactions and steam tanks are awesome. But they were still both fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing if that mission gets brought to 40k. I really do imagine it will be. Okay, you've you've had uh, quite a busy, uh, quite a busy time here. Though I will say, our entire last episode was me talking about my games. So, me- yeah. So here's eight minutes of me talking we'll, about mine. We'll call <laughs> Hope it. You don't even. mind too much. <laughs> basically the same. I basically got to go to Nova myself. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I didn't. Ha- yeah. I haven't played any games since uh, mm-hmm. since Nova. But I do have a game tomorrow against our friend Alfredo. I'm extremely jealous of this. I saw him mentioning it in the Goon Discord. But it's not a 40k game. Well, it is, but it's a different kind. It's an apocalypse game. Babby's first apocalypse game. And I still need to make my lists. I want to do kind of like a... It's 200 power level, which... Uh, It's going to be a lot of KR cases. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to do half and half... Imperial Guard and Space Marines because the Space Marines, I really just want the Astraeus and a couple of repulsors and some dudes, whatever. It's cool. Yeah. How many times a year do you get to use that damn thing? Not that, honestly, I don't even like taking it out of the box. So it's cool. The, <laughs> and then I want to be able to use my like Shadow Sword and my Bane Blade too, just for shits and giggles because mm. that's like, that's Apocalypse. It's perfect for Apocalypse. And I had an Absolutely. idea. I had an idea about mm-hmm. a. I had an idea. So okay. So the Supreme Command Detachment. Are you familiar? Yeah, it's how you can get a super heavy without it, fu- or a Lord of War without fucking up your chapter tactics. Yep, yep, yep. So I was thinking about grabbing some of those for uh, this and like just bringing a bunch of tank commanders and a Bane Blade and then another bunch of tank commanders and a uh, <laughs> and a uh, what do you call it? A uh, Shadow Sword. And that I, th- I feel like that would be a fun, a fun thing to do. Though I was reading the apocalypse rules, and if my commander dies, like the whole detachment just sort of runs away. <laughs> turn. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I should get a commander that I can actually hide. Uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm very excited, though. I think it's going to be a good one. Uh, awesome. So uh, let's move on to new stuff. Now, there's been a good amount of new stuff. There has been. We've talked about all the Nova preview stuff already, but there's been a lot of stuff that's come out before and after that. So, uh, first I want to talk about old stuff. What? Okay. What? What? I have too many, For, talk I have about too many unpainted shit. models at home. Okay. So, I am, except for my Eliminators that mm-hmm. I bought, and Shrike. Shrike doesn't count, though. That's, I mean, I was going to buy Shrike. You were going to get them anyway, yeah. I am not buying stuff until the new year. I will hold you to that. You only have to, I only have to hold, to hold you to that for like three months. Yeah, I know. It's not that bad, but it's like I, I need to make a dent in this backlog and I want to paint Space Marines. I want to paint, like, I've got a Reaver squad, I've got a bunch of lieutenants, mm-hmm. that, like Primaris lieutenants that, that I there's, could paint up in like a day that I yeah, should just, so fun. just get to and paint them. And then be smart like you and tweet them at the Primaris Lieutenant Twitter account. Because why <laughs> haven't I been doing that? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very easy way to get a lot of uh, internet points. Yeah. And I, I just need to do some work on the backlog. Like, the only new project I'm going to be taking on in the next 
probably six months is a new Blood Bowl team for Adepticon. Yeah, but, but I'm again, not. It's only like a dozen models. Yeah, whatever. and I'm not doing that until the new year. Yeah, I'll probably end up buying those guys in January and working on that. It won't. Uh, hopefully, it won't take me too long. I haven't even figured out a color scheme for them yet. But that's that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to be working on on backlog. And the reason I bring this up is because stupid Games Workshop, <laughs> stupid, beautiful, awful, terrible, great Games Workshop, have released a game that I want to play so fucking bad. Yeah. And I, I, I want to buy all of it, but I also want to stick to my goddamn fucking guns for once. And, <laughs> and instead of just go on a stupid drunk at 3 a.m. and my wife is asleep and I'm just hanging with my cats and I'm like, sure, I'll buy that. <laughs> I don't want to do that, but I want to play Aeronautica Imperialis. So fucking yes, so do bad. I. Uh, Dylan brought over a bunch of the models he was working on the other day. Oh, we were going to get so a game good. in. They're so nice. We didn't get around to it. We just ended up painting and drinking, but yeah. Don't cut out a second of that, please. I want to play them. I don't even know which faction I like more, Orcs or Imperium. They are fantastic. The models are amazing. I'm seeing people paint them, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, it's so easy. I could do yeah. it. Yeah, you could. Well, the models <sighs> to a T look great. They're almost all classic Forge World designs, which means there's some baked in nostalgia for, oh, so you know, for Rodgers, folks like me. Man. Yeah, Rodgers. there's also like, I like that it's also on a hex grid map, so I don't need to collect a different set of terrain like I would for Adeptus Titanicus. Yeah. Because that's been one of the things that's made me not really want to get into Adeptus Titanicus is like, I've got all these boards which have really big streets and skulls on them and shit that would look really silly next to 28 millimeter titans <laughs> it's a really big skull <laughs> yeah yeah they're just all giants we're fighting over a battlefield that a lot of giants it's all died gilliman on. skulls <laughs> no gilliman's head is not that big it's all ferris man skulls uh, ah! what oh there what? there you go just took some revision to your own joke to make it work who's doing the shotgun approach now and besides we've seen gilliman he has a screaming katachan head which is normal sized <laughs> Uh, yeah, the range is the gorgeous. The game, I really want to give it a shot. It sounds like it's a lot of fun. They put out a good video about it. And I'm hoping to see more from them soon. I imagine it's going to expand. Out. It's already talked about like hovercraft and other stuff in the rules themselves. There's going to be a lot of more. If they cool give me aeronautica out. sized vultures, mm. I'm going to pass out. They're different thunderbolts for me, so I'm as good as it's going to get. I'm going to fucking pass out. Okay, let's let's move on. I want it so bad, Campbell. I want it so yep. bad. Hey, listeners in the D.C. area, if you have a copy and want to get a game in, contact your boy. Let me know. All right. Well, I'll talk real quick about the other hexagon-based game, <laughs> which is uh, Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. Warhammer Underpants. Underpants. Sorry. I was even thinking about this earlier today. I'm like, yeah, it's Warhammer Underpants. I'm going to talk about Warhammer Underpants. <laughs> I just didn't write Warhammer Underpants in my show notes, so I forgot my... I forgot your old joke. It might be my old joke. Who cares? So it's taken me a while, but I've warmed up to both warbands. Neither are super my bag, but the game seems like it's adding a lot of new rules, like ensnare abilities. And There's which beastmen. Are kind of like, there are beastmen. And I've never been super into beastmen. They've always been kind of like... They're good as a D&D, you know, or... Warhammer fantasy role play, just random schmuck to cut down and shoot and so on, but not really someone I'd ever want to play. I think. And the what? Can sorry? I can I interject here? You you may. I already did. So the y you I, did. I actually really like the Beastman aesthetic. Aesthetic. Really. Aesthetic. Whatever. That aesthetic. Yeah. Aesthetic. You're pathetic with your aesthetic pronunciation. Because they're like druids. They're like old world druids, right? They're mm -hmm. worshiping nature. They're out. They're causing chaos for, quote unquote, civilization. They're fucking around. They are a thorn in everybody's side. But like their 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 whole theme is is very different from everybody else. And yeah, sure, they're chaos aligned, but they don't act like the rest of chaos. They kind of act like chaos, quo chaos, like they just cause destruction and raiding and ruination like they don't have any sort of semblance of a civilization i really like is like the druid aesthetic though of their their shamans i think i mean i think they're be all beautifully sculpted models i'm just not super into them as a faction i think it's a really cool idea 
well, the elves in that set, I'm not super into the satyr elves. I like the upper half of them better than the lower half of them. Although the centaur guy is really cool, I think. I think so centaurs weird, are like a cool idea. Yeah, they're kind of, they have not really been utilized a whole lot in Warhammer games as it is. But I don't the like one bull thing centaurs I, though. In Blood Bowl, they're, they're super good. Okay. And I just, I'm just. Like when, whenever you play someone with a cast worth team, you're just mm. like, oh, this person probably knows what they're doing. Fuck. <laughs> Sounds like you're as jealous. You don't have them. No, I that team. No, I'm, I'm honestly not. Yep. So they've, they've shown some new stuff, namely the Gobbos on Doggos, mm. which is a wonderful set of models, mm. which is a bunch of old school Goblin Wolf Riders yes. that have been kind of just re-sculpted. Like yes. there's nothing too weird about them. They just look like old school Goblin Wolf Riders, but Resculpt with new technology and they look wonderful. And there's been a lot of art hinting at like ogres and other sort of factions in there. Gabos on Doggos. Is that a Crumble McBumble original? I I don't. It's not. I don't know where I read it, but I'm very appreciative of Gabos and Doggos. Okay. I'm sorry. I cannot take credit for that. No, one. I, I mean, it sounded like something you would say. It is something I would say, which is why I said it. <laughs> so the weird thing is, I don't like how they're retiring the old yeah. sets. They're re- <laughs> I, I'm not claiming credit for someone else's joke. I'm being upfront about it. They're retiring the old card sets a lot like a trading card game, sort of like Magic or I guess, I don't know if Pokemon does it. Who cares? But they're not retiring <laughs> the war bands, which is very confusing because now you can buy like Steel Hearts Champions or whatever, but you can't use their cards, but you can use their specific cards, but you can't buy the set that comes with cards anymore. Uh, so it's, it's, and you can't get the fighter cards either, I don't think. So I'd like some better communication from them on this, even though I do totally get retiring or rotating out war bands for balance and so on it's just confusing right now is, i've never been happier that i didn't pick up warhammer underpants right now well all the sets they gave us at uh nova are retired they're all from the first set and they've retired that first set well, you can still buy the figures but you can't play with the set or, or you still can you just can't play in competitive events so for me who doesn't give a shit about that i I'm going to keep using my, you know, my Zarbash's Jits and my fucking Chaos Boys, like my Muscle Bunch, because when they get retired, which I'm sure they will, if they're doing this the first generation of them, I'm still going to be playing the very occasional casual game with friends. So, OK, no bigs. Beast Grave. Beast Grave. Greased. So greased bave. No, 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 no. Gre- no, no, no. OK. No. All right. Just wanted to check. Greased Bay would be if you started using gloss varnish and all the bare chests of the muscle punch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The shotgun approach, ladies and gents. Occasionally hits. There it is. All right, moving on. Psychic Awakening. (gasps) Oh, new Incubi. They rule so fucking hard. Have we seen more than just the one dude? New Incubus rules so fucking hard, <laughs> but not the not Incubus the band. If they have a new album, I'm sure it sucks. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> yeah. So Psychic Awakening, they have been teasing like new stuff for every faction. Which hey, cool. You know who needs more new stuff? Space Marines. Anyways. Oh yeah. Uh, Psychic Awakening seems like a lot of fun. They have te- not, they've just straight up shown us some new models. The Howling Banshee Exarchs. They showed us a Howling Banshee at Nova, and now they've mm-hmm. shown us the Clavex. Which is a very dumb <laughs> name for the uh, for the Incubi Sergeant, I guess. Uh, but it is a really cool model. Oh, it's a very cool model. I've seen him photoshopped into rowing a canoe, and it looks really dumb. But I still think he's really cool. Uh, a kayak, Campbell. Oh, fuck a it. kayak. I'm exposing my complete lack of watercraft right now. Knowledge. Wow, well, I've, I've, I, I. Ugh. I, I feel like you don't even know me anymore. I've never been more disappointed. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> Considering who you're talking Considering to. Considering you've been podcasting with me for like two years and change. Yeah, that's hard. Ugh. Yeah, Psychic Awakening. Very excited to see what comes from that. I, I, I imagine it's probably another like Vigilus-esque book with a bunch of fun stuff for every army. Yep, there's going to be a bunch of books. We just don't know how many. Yeah, so. Oh, oh man. They teased something though. Because I think some like art got leaked. And then Warhammer community went and like, all right, all right, leakers. And so I, th- it seems like, and I don't have any inside information here. It seems like, and we're gonna find out on Monday, anyways. Mm-hmm. New Phoenix Lords. It, it's I. That's Jane Czar on the box art. She has the yeah, but who's fucking, who's she fighting? 
some Dark Eldar schmuck that she's going to throw her disc from Kroll at and probably kill? It I don't know. looks an awful lot like it could like be Drizar. Drizar, who Drizar, is Drizar, a Phoenix yeah. Lord who like ditched the regular Eldar and was like, check it out. I listen to Slipknot now. <laughs> <laughs> it was, right, it was 1997. Cast, episode 57, so. the Slipknot episode. I listen to Slipknot now. <laughs> no, it's terrible. That's so bad. Yes, yeah, so it could be a Jane Zara versus Drazar, which is mm-hmm. a cool, uh, a cool thing. I'm, I'm like the, the both of those models. I think that Jane Zara model was around in second edition. It was. It was. It's a classic Jess Goodwin sculpt. It's but actually it is very also, good. Oh, it's it's. I'd say it's the best of the Phoenix Lords, without a doubt. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But it yeah. is. 20 I don't know. Magen Ra kicks, kicks a lot of ass, dude. She's more dynamic than Magen Ra. Yes. Magen Ra is cool, though. But Magen, Ra, Magen Ra beats her on theme, but she has better yes, dynamicism. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Jazar is like a third edition Dark Eldar model who's just been sort of yeah. limping along. Uh, though I don't even know if Jazar is any good anymore. Mm, mm. He might be now. Yeah. So, okay. Moving on. Uh, the, the Forge World has released a bunch of stuff. Cool. Moving on. Uh, Adeptus Sororitas vehicles. They showed them to us. And, oh, buddy, it's a rhino with an upgrade sprue, but that yep. fucking upgrade sprue it's down. It's a hell of an upgrade sprue. Oh, it's so gothic and, yeah, like, masterwork. I mean, the only thing I think I can build as fast as that certain Ikea bed frame is a rhino chassis, so that's pretty nice. That's just the same kit again? Yeah. Uh, that has got to be the longest, the most mileage they've gotten out of one kit. I can ever imagine. And I mean, it's the Rhino good. kit. It's good. Good for them. It is exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, because you got, so you got all the battle tanks, the Predators, the Vindicators, mm-hmm. the whatever. You got the, the uh, what's it called? Razorback. Thank you, Brain. Good job. Yep. Uh, Whirlwind, Hunter, Stalker. All of them. Demos, Rhino, whatever. There, there's so much shit. There's so many different variants. No, but the, and the, 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 I don't mind the amount of like more. sculpture and bullshit on, on these tanks is, is amazing. Like the, mm-hmm. we've seen a bunch of models from the Adeptus Sororitas range. We some of us have them. Uh, the detail work is incredible. I am really excited to see what else they come out with for this army, and I'm so happy for Sisters players and Buddy. They're they're so good. I I will oh. very likely be a Sisters player at some point in the next year. Oh, they look so. Good. Don't know quite how I'll paint him yet, but I'll very likely be a sister's player. All right, so uh, some Primaris characters, some more. Yes, let's let's move on to what, let's move on to the famously underrepresented Space Marines here. So uh, we got, I mean, you well, you could argue that like oh, Ultramarines are really the only ones that have good representation. The rest oh of the first chapter, but <laughs> anywho, the anywho, Torgaradon of the Imperial Fists, and here's a good, here's a good name for you, fucko. Adrax yep. Agatoni. Adrax Agatoni. <laughs> Adrax right, Agatoni is that, is or that Agatone. The Salamander Boy? Okay, these two models are like bonkers good. So let's start with right, I'm Adrax just, I'm all... Agatoni. And okay. uh, the amount of detail in Salamander's bullshit they worked into this model <laughs> is insane. I think he's the better of the two. I think I, I really like that he has the silhouette of a top knot, but it's fire, which makes you want to cut that off and put it on Abaddon's head. I disagree with you that he's the you better don't like of the Abaddon? two. Oh, ooh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, I so think I, I like his. Oh. No, go ahead. Let's please, talk please, about please, him please. before no, we talk yeah, about no, no, Please, 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 please. He's got a cool hammer and a cool flamer gun. I think he's a cool model. He's he's, a, I like the bit of detail he's got. He's got a, he's got a cool, cool cape. He's got a he's cool got some flamer. dragon scales. He's got some scales. He's got a cloak. You know, what do you, who, yeah, who doesn't what's... like a cloak? Who don't like a cloak? I like a cloak. You like a cloak? I got a cloak. I don't you even got, think I cloak? own a fucking cloak. Okay. I own, I own jackets. I'm sorry. You got to go to my local charity cloaks for blokes and get yourself a cloak. Ooh, the shotgun approach. So <laughs> never ends. Adrax Agatoni. He's uh, he looks great though. No, I, I I totally agree with you on the whole top knot thing. It, it mm-hmm. it's like a a burning brazier coming off the top of his backpack. It looks like an Abaddon esque top knot, but he's got a lot, an incredible amount of detail in there. It's just Campbell. It's just that that pose is already very well represented in 40k. It is, and that's not a problem. It's not quite the Primaris Lieutenant holding a sword up in the air. 
It's, but it is a pretty well represented pose, I will be honest. It's not a problem. But then you go to Tor Garadon. And buddy, they have crammed so much fucking attitude into this one <laughs> model. It blows my fucking mind. He is like, he's got this, he's got a, a shoulder mounted grav cannon, the biggest yep. power fist that's not yeah, on a knight we have ever seen. <laughs> He has big fist energy like a hermit crab. And he is he's just like sort of hanging back with his giant fist curled up and his face is just it looks it looks like he's saying fuck you at the beginning and the end of every sentence. All right. uh, his jaw is alarmingly square. Oh, it's so square. And I have seen him photoshopped to be Duke Nukem <laughs> Yo, which is with, okay. with the middle finger, which is extremely good. Hold up. I've also hold up. Oh, yeah. Hold up. What? We talking about the art? I'm no, I'm talking about well, okay. <laughs> the arts. <laughs> the art's hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about he's got like white, gray, whitish hair, like on his model mm -hmm. painted by the studio team. But when I saw that somebody had photoshopped yellow hair onto him, I was immediately like, sold. I was like, a hundred percent. If I was getting that model, he'd have a fucking blonde flat top, one hundred percent. Because Duke Nukem, Guile, yeah, fucking Jean Claude Van Damme, all of it, all of it. No, he's so great. Van he's so great. As like, Guile. It's it's like it's a pose that you don't see that much in Games Workshop models, but just just the fact that he's like there, he's he looks so solid and unyielding. He's a Man, thick boy. They, sometimes they fucking nail it with these models, dude, and they've been doing it more often than not lately. Uh, but this this guy right there is the personification of what Games Workshop is doing right now. That's making them so successful because he's a fantastic fucking model and boy. He is thick. I think he's cool. I do think the Salamander Boy is the better model of the two. No, we're I like just going to have to the Salamander. agree Ooh. that they're both cool. They are both cool. And that you're wrong. I, I accept if I'm wrong. I don't mind being wrong in this case. I have also, however, I think I was permanently poisoned by the artwork of Tor Garadon because his expression in the artwork is hilarious and I have also seen his face photoshopped to be Guy Fieri's, and I can't unsee that now, which is a good and bad thing. It's none of the best. Think, uh. I do think he looks like he's about to fall over, though. Like, he looks like he's about to tip over sideways because of how fucking big that <laughs> fist is. <laughs> but if I were going to, um, if I wanted a Gravis Captain for my Crimson Fist that I haven't worked on since, like, 2011, yeah. I would probably get him and just, you know, put a sort stick a bolt gun under that big old fist and use him as the uh, Primaris Gravis captain. Yeah, he looked real, real good. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there any other new stuff you want to talk about? I hope not. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, oh. The, the, iron, the Iron Hands Iron Dad? Our, Papa, Papa Daddy? Yeah, Iron Dad, yeah. Papa Daddy. Yeah, his rules are good. He's Yeah, and he's cheap, too. Uh, iron Hands players are going to be uh, real fucking annoying. For the next yeah, I think two to swipe. five years. Uh, I'd say probably until chapter approved. They uh you know you know who's uh joining the ranks of the Iron Hands players? Of uh, of people we Cap know. People we know, who do you think is joining the ranks of Iron Hands players and has already Prim bought three repulsor executioners? Who do you think? Primaris Kevin. It's Primaris Kevin. It's not. It's Scott Horsey. Oh, I forget he had he did he have space marines before? Uh he has an old uh space marine army. What chapter? I don't know. All right. I cool. think Humber. Okay. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to uh the segment where we uh make some calls. Yeah, we got multiple emails sharing woods porn stories with us from oh, all over the world. God. So that's a thing we all know about Dude, now. The, did you know some people in Australia call it bush porn? Which is, I do now. Which is very funny. That double entendre is incredibly powerful. But we, we've gotten woods porn stories from all over the world, so you can... Hold up. I, you know, you Hold can up. keep sharing Hold this. Up. Hold up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bush porn. Bush porn. You say yeah. double entendre. Uh-huh. I mean, it's still got porn in it. So it's, it's... I mean, it's like bush porn, yes. Porn you find under a bush, and then the other meaning of bush, but porn is still there. It's it sexual there. either way. Is it a double entendre? Or is it a single entendre? <laughs> These are the questions, man. All right, listeners. Now that we've talked about bush porn, please write in with your opinions on the level of entendre going on. Okay. Well, we've got a, a lot of reader mail over the past month. And mm -hmm. buddy, whew, I want to make some mentions real quick before we go on okay. to making any calls here. 
So, first off, a listener Eddie wrote in and corrected me when I talked about the wallet throwing during the Nova cast it was not during Lord of the Rings, but it was actually for the sisters. I okay. thought it was weird that someone would have thrown that for that building. Like, it's a nice building, but that's a bit much for a house. Well, it had been two weeks since Nova, and my memory already is bad. So, Eddie, Fair. thanks for correcting, and very, very sorry. Let's get together and play Necromunda. And then we got a long fucking email from Dave Scaratella, or Scarlatella, rather, who beat me on Saturday morning at Nova, who totally dumpstered me. He got he sent like a fucking nine page email detailing every exact moment of complete and total domination that he put me through. And so, Dave, to you, I say, what the fuck, dude? Why would you do this to me? And then also in response, I bet you had a fun game. I bet you did. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time, Dave. Motherfucker. Dumpster me again, Dave. Kick my ass next time, fuckface. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got dumpstered, y'all. I think I got tabled on turn three. So, boo. Anyways, lastly, before we get into making the call, uh, listener Reese Bell listened to our entire catalog in three weeks. And I just wanted to say, I hope you're okay, Reese. <laughs> Send us a wellness check, not for our sake, but for your <laughs> sake. Yeah, because, like, fuck, dude. That's, uh, that's a lot of real stupid content in a short amount of time. Okay, but let's, uh, let's move on to where we actually make the call. This is from Alex Smith via email, and he asks, Which of the chaos gods would make the worst roommate? I have to say <laughs> Nurgle. He'd definitely leave his dishes in the sink and do unspeakable things to the toilet. Campbell, which chaos god makes the worst roommate? So I have had all four of these gods as roommates <laughs> in my time living in Boston. Because like, all right, let's just start up straight up. Zinch, that is your stoner roommate. Absolute your stoner roommate who will be happy to share those drugs with you, sometimes maybe without asking you first. But they're definitely your stoner roommate. That is like they have the tapestries in the wall. There's always like probably Floyd, like less the jam band sort of stoner thing, but more the psychedelic sort of stoner roommate sort of thing. Like that's What's your kind of roommate fucking difference. Don't answer. Cause One, I don't care. Y- yeah. They, they're both terrible. Um, but that's your, that's that kind of roommate. And you know what? They're generally pretty innocuous most of the time, except for when they leave the oven on, cause they were baking something. They got high and then fell asleep. Nice. Uh, that only happened once. Now, Nurgle, the garbage dumpster, butt roommate, who leave shit everywhere and like something's literal that I think might be one of the worst because at that point your home is a biohazard Mm -hmm. and that's not super cool because uh getting sick because your roommates are sick all the time always sucks hey listeners real quick if Mm -hmm. you've never had a Nurgle roommate that means you're the Nurgle roommate oh I was about to say that means you never went to college Ooh, think about that fuckos yeah, no, I've I've had multiple Nurgle roommates, and I think they might be they're tied for the worst with another because Slanesh is the roommate that fucks too much. That's they're just fucking. They're just fucking. And you know what? Good for them. So, OK, that rules. All right, Keep all right. having fun. So I think I don't think the corn roommate would be that bad, just like a, a bro that works out and maybe does steroids. I've actually lived with a guy like that. It was fine. The Slanesh okay, roommate. I, I've lived with the aggressive roommate who is like the who is the corn roommate who is like, I'm going to kick your ass and like make threats to you and stuff like that. Oh. And that feel feeling unsafe is not super. Oh, cool. shit. That sucks. Yeah, I never, I've I'm, I'm pretty it's big. Okay. So I, I, I guess that doesn't really happen. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't know. My initial thought would be like the Slanesh roommate would be the bad, worst because they were bringing a bunch of strangers into your house. But then I just realized I've, a stranger. All stranger is, is a friend you don't know yet. Yeah, the strangers who were passed out on my couch because they're doing cocaine all night because my roommate was a dealer. I they were not my friends. I did not make friends with them. Uh, I think that I think what would piss me off the most is the Nurgle roommate. Is this somebody who's just like that disgusting? Well, the thing is, the Nurgle roommate is probably the most normal. Like normalized grossness is a problem. Yeah, and I think there are more people who are just kind of like gross and leave shit everywhere and like shave without cleaning up after it and so on. Then there are people who sell drugs out of your living room and invite strangers over at three o'clock in the morning to do cocaine with them. So what do you think? What's what's your what's your what's your uh, what's your worst roommate? 
I think Nurgle because they aren't just the worst. They're also the most prevalent. Okay. There's the most of them. There are more Nurglings than there are any other lesser demons in this sort of situation. Okay. I like it. I think we're we're in agreement. Okay. We're moving on. We're doing it. And uh, <laughs> listeners, I'm in the process of home hunting, house hunting. It's it's hell. Welcome back. I'm uh, in- instead of taking a break from doing terrible, awful things that suck. I am just I'm just going to keep moving forward with terribleness in hell world 2019. Mm-hmm. So I am uh, exposing myself to the house hunting process. Now, Danielle and I have a document about Ooh. like what sort of things we're looking for in a house. Maybe Ann and I should have had that before we bought a house. So we have our must-haves and we have our nice-to-haves and all that. But Campbell, I got to tell you something, and I don't want you to tell Danielle. Okay, I won't. But there's only one thing I care about in my in my new house. <laughs> and it's having a ham space, a Warhammer playing area. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all I care about. And uh, really, anything else? Okay, cool. Whatever. Now I can't I I can't live that. I can't live my truth. I have to pretend to care about every aspect of every house. But your boy, all I really care about is throwing some dice in a place and fucking hanging out. I'm assuming you've made it clear you want this space to begin with, though? Yes, yes. She knows okay, this. Okay, cool, cool, yes, cool. This, she at least knows what you want. Yes, she knows that that is an important part of the home buying process. I didn't mention it first, though, because I didn't want to give it away. Pretty sure I mentioned it to Anne first. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to ask you what you think makes a good ham space. Okay, so I went through this same hellish process roughly two years ago. Like there were some missed episodes early on because I was going through this whole dealio. And yeah, it sucks. It's it's like having an extra part time job on top of your existing job and existing commitments and so on. But it does mean you get to see a lot of places and get inspired by a lot of places and figure out how you will map your life onto a lot of places, which did lead me to think a lot about my own ham space, because the only real references I had for this were the gaming space I grew up with at my my parents' house, where my dad had a big office where he did all his work, but he also had all his miniatures there, which is similar to what I have now. And Dylan's situation where he has a gaming basement, where he has gaming tables, painting area and that whole sort of thing. Do you thing. play at your house often? I do play at my house pretty often, Ooh, actually. Nice. Uh, I use the dining room for most of my gaming because it's a fairly well lit big room with a big old table that I can fit a couple two by four boards on and put all my, you know, tiles and yeah. so on, yeah, on yeah, and yeah. play there rather comfortably. And when it does come to get, finding a gaming space, a neutral room like a dining room is really great, I will say. Mm. But the one thing I what I was looking for a space, I wanted a dedicated office because i work from home but i also you know paint a lot so having a space where i can do that is important and i did want a basement because i want to be able to transform basement to a dedicated hobby space much like dylan's much like a lot of people's have i've seen a lot of people on you know twitter instagram whatever posting their hobby spaces in the basement now the problem is finishing a basement to a degree that i want it finished costs a lot of fucking money <laughs> and, I, and there's one thing i don't have and it's a lot of fucking money yeah so my initial dreams of having a basement gaming space have more or less been dashed by the financial reality of things but we'll see what happens in the future it depends how long we stay here because if we're here for like in this house for like 20 years then yeah sure we can make that happen but if we're moving in five to ten maybe not so when you're looking for a home, you and especially a home when you want some gaming space, you want to figure out what you want. Do you want it to be a dedicated room? Do you want it to be a blended space that you can blend with the needs of your home and the needs of your partner? And when you're in that space, what sort of things do you need? So when it comes to your own gaming space, what do you specifically need in your dedicated gaming space? Well, so what I've noticed about a lot of people's basement gaming areas is they're mm-hmm. poorly lit. Yes, they are. Uh, generally, they often are. Like to the point where it's oftentimes hard to read dice. Mm-hmm. Like I go to uh, Mike Brandt's house and play in his basement sometimes, and he doesn't have any, uh, well, he doesn't have good uh, ceiling lighting down there. Okay. And it's just it's just like after after a couple hours down there trying to play a game of 40K, you start getting headaches, and it's just dark and it sucks. So I think mm-hmm. lighting actually is probably pretty fucking important for a space yep. like this. Uh, and... Uh, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking not a shared space. 
And it's like a dedicated Dan room. Yeah. And the only reason that is, is so I can do something like set up a table in there Mm -hmm. for like a couple of folding tables with a, with a fat mat or whatever on it and uh, not have it be in Daniel's way at all. Yeah. Well, that was the one thing I want to do because you remember playing at my old apartment. Yeah. How you had to crawl under the table if you wanted to go get another beer. Yes, exactly. And that's not something you can leave set up. No, no. And being able to leave a game set up, whether it's to, you know, go get dinner or if it's a really big game to maybe even take it on a second day or whatever is really cool. And to be able to do that in a space where you're not going to be impinging on the common space in your home or risking it being utterly annihilated by your cats or whatever is kind of a dream of mine. And I think it's kind of a dream of a lot of uh, people who would be gaming at home. Yeah. So I'm thinking like. It would be nice to have have my own space, and at the same time, you know, if I get my own space, I think Danielle should get her own space, kind of thing. Yes. So you know, it's 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 going to be like that. It's not going to be like the only thing I want in the house is blah. Like, even though I did say that at the top of the segment, it's not really true because it's not it's not equitable. But I'm thinking, Campbell, in mm-hmm. what ways can I shift the paradigm on a ham space? in in a house like like what in what ways would i be like a a like a revolutionary by adding blank to the space or or doing something with the space what what what, how in what ways am i reaching for the stars like everybody's like you know fridge and a bar right okay it's pretty that's pretty easy that's pretty easy fridge bar Mm -hmm. but what about a dumb waiter yeah so uh, uh please go on please go on <laughs> no, dude. or a cold are you shoot? looking for homes that have a, a cold shoot to drop your empties down that's great what about catering <laughs> <laughs> dedicated wait staff dedicated wait staff with chicken fingers and plenty of barbecue sauce <laughs> a, a dedicated butler who will throw popcorn chicken into my mouth while i play my games <laughs> now I don't, I don't got butler money my dude yeah, no, I don't have basement money, let alone butler money. I also think that's really fucked up. <laughs> okay, so I've been to a lot of gaming spaces in a lot of dudes' houses, and I think the the unfortunate paradigm shifter is to have it be like a nice space above ground, mm. like a nice space that is like an obviously finished room. Yeah, that if you're st- that if a passerby walks in, they're like, oh, this is a nice room. Maybe some natural some lighting. I don't Natural lighting, yeah. being able to see the sun once in a while would be nice <laughs> because although I've played in some like really nice basement spaces, like again, Dylan's game space, which I was helping him con Marie like a few weeks ago is a really great place to game. But at the end of the day, it's still a basement like my own basement is infested with giant crickets. So I don't want to go down Ooh. there anymore. They are the size of my thumb and they're horrifying. They, they very rule careful. The basement. Build. It's their basement. As long as they as long as they stay down there, they don't come up here. I'll let them. Live. Well, the cats will take care of them if they ascend the stairs, uh, won't they? Uh, Esmeralda is a very bad hunter um, and Numi doesn't give a shit about anything. <laughs> OK, well, and, and Toby's too sweet for this world. I still think you but should anyway, I still think you should free that poor cat. I am in the process of it. We have a cat therapist coming over this weekend. I will not be fielding any questions about this right now. <laughs> But I do think having like a real finished, very, for lack of a term, adult seeming space where you have your gaming in, it would be a really cool thing. Like you don't have posters in the wall. You have art in frames. Your shelving situation, which you're going to need it for terrain, for cases, et cetera, is very intentional and is very it isn't just, you know, shit you found lying on the side of the street or whatever. It's like nice, finished looking furniture. I think just having the room be decorated to the same standard as your living room, your dining room, your bedroom, like rooms that you and your partner work on together to make them look nice. I think having that level of finishedness, for lack of a better term, is what would be elevating the standard here, because, again, most gaming spaces are the spaces occupied largely by straight dudes, in my experience, and most straight dudes is a sense of Decor is not dissimilar from how it was when they were teenagers. Yeah. The only difference is instead of posters of Carmen Electra on the wall, they have posters of Space Marines. So some things don't change that much. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think that's great advice, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to upgrading our space. I mean, that's like the biggest thing about buying a home, moving mm-hmm. from apartment to home is like just having, you know, more space. 
And yeah, no, it's it's great to have more space. And like I've integrated a lot of the gaming stuff I need into our dining room. Like we have a bench along the wall that has a essentially wall to wall cat bed that my cat shuns (laughs) that inside that bench is all my terrain. And it all stores away rather nicely. And it means my setup and my setup and teardown is rather quick because I can just put it all away in that room. It's great. And the boards I put on top of the dining room table, they hide away in a different area. Everything goes together rather quickly and rather easily. And I think being able to integrate the spaces, if you have to, are very nice. And also, as far as you wanting like a dedicated gaming space, do look into understanding what it might take to blend it because everyone's needs are very different everyone's means are very different and finding the balance between the two is going to be important when finding a home all right great advice listeners i'd love to include you in the conversation also if you want to tweet at us or hit us up on our email uh, contact at 40kbadcast.com that is and tell me about your gaming space and what you were looking for and what you've got going on there, especially if you have something cool going on in your gaming gaming space. Like, I'd love to see it. I'd love to get some ideas. So please. No, I would love to see pictures. And I'm not trying to throw shade too hard at anyone who does have maybe a less than finished or, you know, just kind of thrown together sort of basement space or whatever, because like your space is your space and what makes you happy makes you happy. And that rules. And Campbell I'm hates talking you. About, I, and he thinks you're a piece of shit. I think how your interior you? design, I think your interior decor could use a little work. Watch some home, watch some HGTV. All right, Campbell, we've been very stupid on this podcast many times. Yes, we have. Many times this episode, some might say. Some is me. And I am some. I think that we are busting out with a superlatively stupid segment in this next one. Yeah, no, this is the nadir of stupidity. Uh, nadir. Isn't it? I stand by what I said. Okay, well, we we keep doing it. All right, so here's the question. We're going to <laughs> we're going to go to the Primaris Pizza Parlor, mm-hmm. and we're going to ask the important question, Campbell. What sort of pizza would the new Primaris characters order? Now, before we get started with this, not every chapter has Primaris characters yet. I'm sure there's more to come. So we might do a part two at some point in the future when there are more <laughs> Primaris characters based on the feedback from this segment, which we won't read. We're just going to do it anyway. <laughs> but we've got a good crop of Primaris characters right now. And so we what we're going to do, we're going to do is we're going to go through the characters and we're going to we are going to uh, tell you what kind of pizza each of us thinks they would order and also what kind of beer they would pair with their pizza. Exactly. So this is, listeners, I know that this is the content that you all have been asking for, and we're here to give it to you. This might be the most on-brand segment we've ever done. All right, let's start out with our our friendly salamander, Adrax Agatoni. Yeah. Hit me. So, all right, so personally, I think he's a coal-fired craft pizza joint kind of guy. All right. Like, it's going to be some really artisanal, bougie sort of pizza, and it's going to have hots, jalapenos, probably some smoked sausage on top of that. Like, I think he's, again, it's a, it's still a, a pizza that can be enjoyed by a lot of people, but it is one that is in, intimately crafted. And, of course, to pair with that, he's going to have either a good porter or a smoked lager. Oh, this yes, okay, yeah, like a uh, cloak and dagger. Yeah, I'm into that. Like I'm I into that. Yeah, okay, I'm with you on the beer. I think you nailed it mm-hmm. on the beer, like a smoke, like something smoky to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's good. I, I, but the pizza, as we all know, salamanders are the most ethical of chapters. Mm. And, oh, okay. And what's more ethical than veganism? He is the. If one primary space marine is a vegan, it's going to be this salamander yes. guy. Yeah. Yes. So I think. Adrex Agatoni orders a vegan pizza with a cauliflower crust and plenty of jalapenos on top. Mm, yeah, get some of that nooch cheese in there. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, I think that's. I think I think those are both pretty pretty viable choices. I'm not going to argue with you on yours. All right, let's move on to Tor Garadon. And all right, <laughs> this is a thick thick lad. Like of all the Space Marines, he's definitely the Space Marine who looks like he is the most familiar with the pizza and beer pairing. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like he would go with like a, a supreme pizza with everything. And I'm not just talking your peppers and onions supreme pizza. No, I'm talking a pizza so loaded with toppings, it barely resembles pizza anymore. Like it's a casserole. Peppers. It, no, it, it's like it's like an open air meat garden. <laughs> like there's 
peppers, there's veggies, there's hamburger, there's jalapenos, there's pepperoni, there's bacon, there's potato skins, jalapeno poppers, everything. Like there's nothing not on this pizza. All right. And he's and he's going to pair that with like stouts with double digit ABVs. OK. All right. Like it's barrel aged, not unlike his barrel chest. Like it is going to be some stout that pick that pours thicker than motor oil. That's like a 15, 16 percent. All right. So uh, I, I, I diverged a little bit from you in this one. OK. I think Torgaridon is going to go with a pizza called the meat executioner. <laughs> and I just want you listeners to think about the idea of a pizza called the meat executioner. I'm picturing it right now. My heart hurts. And Torgaridon is 100% drinking Bud Lights. 100% <laughs> macro like brews a 30 rack. as cheap as they can come. But like a 30 rack to just himself. <laughs> yeah, just to fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Torgaridon. I love Torgaridon. Oh, you thick lad. Let's move on to Corsaro Khan. So personally, I think he's going to be our light beer fella because he's got to keep on the move. He's a guy who's always running. He's running like an extra D3 inches or whatever the fuck. Like he's got to be on his feet. He's going to be a light beer fella. Like maybe not a like a Bud Select 55 light beer kind of fella because he still likes the taste of light adjacent beer. But he's probably like cracking down on some cores. But the thing is, I think he's our meat lover because he's a hunter mm. and the entire chapter of the White Scars are hunters. Okay. So I think he's just going to be a just regular meat lovers kind of guy, like not the meat executioner, not like the sausage apocalypse, <laughs> just regular meat lovers. So meat lovers and light beer. OK, I think uh, I think Corsair Khan's going to have a meatball pizza because okay. meatballs remind him of the heads he's taken from his enemies. <laughs> They do look kind of like the desiccated heads of his uh, decapitated quarry. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah, and I think well, uh, I think as far as as beverages go, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like Corsaro Khan, he's got this like this like rep as like this wild man hunter, but I think this dude likes red wine. Ooh, I, th- I think this ooh. I think this dude is like you know what you know what looks and kind of tastes like blood red wine. I th- yeah, but I've got to weed myself off the whole blood thing. I'll go with some red wine. I get that. I think he's doing a meatball pizza. With a nice glass of red wine. Not an Irish red or a Flanders or anything of the sort, just a red wine. That works. That works. All right. All right, moving on. Iron Father Pharaoh's Papa Daddy himself. Yeah, Iron. All right, so Iron Daddy, he's an iron hand, and they're all about efficiency. So I think, what's the most efficient possible means of pizza and alcohol delivery? Totino's Pizza Rolls and Steel Reserve. <laughs> knowing okay. him as an iron as an iron dad like he's gonna probably be using his little servo arm to chuck pizza rolls into his mouth yeah. while he just chugs can after can of steel reserve he might mix them all into a slurry in the blender when he needs his third or fourth who knows yeah. it's efficient so i've got a uh, iron father ferris is not interested in pizza he prefers soylent <laughs> Uh, very similar energy there. Very similar energy. Although I have seen a Photoshop of him as a, um, as a, I think someone called it Iron, Iron Papa John, <laughs> where he's holding a giant pizza peel and he has a chef hat. Because uh, the look on his um, on his metal face mask, it does look kind of like a mustache. Oh, Papa Daddy. I love that guy. All right, let's move on. Marnius Calgar, Campbell. This is your Ooh. sphere of expertise now. All right. So Calgar is a man willing to change with the times. And he's willing to do what's hard and different because it's right. So Hawaiian pizza. Ooh. Ham and pineapple. All right. One of like my favorites. Li- Here's the thing. It's a little different, but it's still Codex adherent, which is why he's also into craft IPA. It's not really weird beer, just different, changing, new, better beer, but nothing too weird. So Hawaiian pizza, nice craft IPA. I feel personally attacked. You should feel personally honored. I'm comparing you to Marnius motherfucking Calgar. <laughs> pretty much what I would order. Though I, my favorite pizza is Hawaiian pizza with jalapenos. So. Oh, you got to have hots on there. Either banana peppers or jalapenos, depending on the pizza joint. Either are delightful. I think Marnius Calgar is right down the middle of the road. He's picking toppings that everybody likes. He is not making any waves. He is adhering strictly to the codex. I think he's a cheese or pepperoni man and nothing else. Okay. And when it comes to beer... Sam Adams, just like it's it's better okay. than Bud Light, but it's still mm-hmm. a macro brew. It is still it is only technically 
a craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> craft beer name what only. It, all right. So when it comes to just the guy who go after regular ass cheese pizza, I think someone who is old fashioned and looks old fashioned and looks old as hell. So I think Tigarius. Oh, great I think segue. Tigarius is, is an old fashioned guy who knows what he likes and will never change. So he's going to have plain cheese pizza and old man beer like Schlitz. I was thinking, OK, that's that's excellent on the beer. I was thinking the same thing, that he was definitely a malt liquor guy like Schlitz or Mickey's or something. Uh, just because yeah, it's, it's like, just because it's like yeah. it's like a little bit different, but it's also a little bit worse. But it's only different because it's where he's from. Like he's only having Genesee cream ale because he's from <laughs> Utica. So OK, so he's like regional shitty beer. Yeah, but it's his regional right, shitty beer. I, it's his region. I'm with, I'm with you on that one, uh, though. I have I have him as a mushroom guy why is that because he likes to find secrets right he Mm, likes to okay he likes to go into like the musty tomes of the librarium in ultramar and likes to find secrets Mm -hmm. and i'm sure in his in his searching in his uh in his research he's probably found a little bit of fungus in those books and has acquired a taste for that's a that's an understandable understandable association i'm not against it uh, Campbell, there's one more character we haven't talked about yet. There is one guy left, and he is going to come screaming out of here. It is K. Van Shrike. Uh, <laughs> so I think he orders just black olives on a white pizza. He would, all right, he would get the grossest pizza because nobody else would want it. He just wants his own pizza. He, just wants, he just wants pizza. The, and he's going to get he really just, mad if anybody even fucking looks at it. He just wants the power of having his own pizza, which he would cut apart with his lightning claws and then eat with a fork. <laughs> He's 100% now, he, black he olives said, on right. a white pizza. The worst yeah. possible pizza. Like, barely edible. Maybe put anchovies on there if he really wants to make sure no one else just wants it. hot fucking garbage. And then he doesn't talk to anybody at the pizza parlor the entire time. No, no but he would sit at the bar like nursing a single black IPA because it's something familiar, but dark. I was going to say, I was going to say that he was going to drink a black lager because you, well, you think thing. that black he, lager is going to be good because it's like lager, but with actual taste this time, but they're never good. They're always disappointing. They're always just the like, thing. like that sort of like shitty papery bitterness on top of the bad yeah. banana flavor. <laughs> now, here's the thing though. He probably secretly hates beer and exclusively yes. drinks white claw. Yes. Oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why didn't we think of this? Fuck. K. K. Van Shrike is a white claw he, man. There's no laws when you're drinking claws. There's no laws when oh you're drinking claws. God. Not even the Geneva Convention. A white pizza. With black olives and a six and of a, white claws. And that's a that and that and that and a bunch of movies that nobody likes or has ever seen. That's his that's his night. That's his fucking night right there. The, the, it's Jim Jarmusch, you wouldn't understand. Oh it. my god. He he like watches like Eraser Head and he's like, Yeah, mm-hmm. I get it, but he doesn't get it. No, he doesn't. Also, nobody gets it. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cave on strike what a loser what a <laughs> fucking absolute joke of a human ah, i'm sorry dork ass MCR post-human haircut. post-human Ooh, good point i honestly though black olives on a white pizza is like f- is making me feel physically ill it is a sickness inducing piss oh my god the white claw what a good call i am in th- <laughs> he's got oh. four of them on his wrists <laughs> I'm so enthused by this. Okay. That was a great segment, Campbell. I'm really glad we came to it with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't tell me what pizza. You, don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. All right, Campbell. It's time. Part two will come when there's more Primaris characters to talk about. It's time to talk about facts or mm-hmm. the other the fan fiction the, 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 the they're two sides of the same coin really what we guard against in the night the fan fiction so campbell on this segment you read me something that you found on the internet and i hate it pretty much every time hey sometimes i find it in a genuine black library novel sometimes, sometimes. like three like four times 
They come out at night. Mostly. Mostly. Unknown part of the galaxy. Space Station, capital D, debris, headquarters of the wreckers. Quote, unquote, basement. Impactor was in bad condition after the events of Garrus Negative 9. The loses of his teammates and the condition of Springer had devastating effects on him. Truth be told, Impactor wasn't out in a suicide mission's killing Decepticons. Oh, no, God he was just sitting it, thinking if he, had, if he should have a title of being a leader of the Wreckers. <sighs> he, Guzzle, Cup, Verity, and a half-breathing Springer what? were still alive for now. How is it possible to lead a team of trustworthy warriors into battle when I'm arguing with my own damn stubbornness? Promise, forgive me, he thought. While thinking, Impactor was consuming a lot of Energon and making a mess in the process, also being drunk and holding his hand, gun, he fired at anything he could find. Of course, that led him to fire at a bottle of Energon, making a huge explosion and sending him to another universe. Cicatrix Maledictum. Imperial Guardsmen ship is being boarded by a small warband of orcs. Damn it, we can't lose the supplies, otherwise the governor won't be able to win the battle. A small squat of guardsmen, <sighs> led by a young commissar named Jack, Jackson Jet, pr- protect valuable supplies to be Tropet on planet Pluto 12. My thought, it's not real. To win a battle for Governor William, William is... However, the only result is where brutal attacks from orcs and now they're corned outside of the storehouse. I can't understand. We you. hold this position. We must drive them back just for a little while. He looked back and saw some of his men preparing a machine gun. Do not show fear to those green skins for the emperor. A he yelled gun. as his men were trying the rebest to defend their wrong bear post. <laughs> An explosion was heard from nearby. The young officer couldn't send his men at a time like this. He really hoped that there was a rescue team or the worse. I hope you liked it. I know it may sound to some of you that Impactor is drunk or the explosion. It is my first story. Had no other excuse to use teleportation to another world. So help me if you want. I would like some advice until next time. Wow. End of chapter one. Famously concerned about the welfare of their men. Commissars. Yes, Commissar Jackson Jet. Wow, uh, that was fan fiction, and I could <sighs> yeah, literally barely understand it. That that's um, I don't think that's quite the author's intent. I don't think they, I don't think they were trying to do some weird Ian Watson mindscape sort of shit. I think that a change by Impactor, which is also the name of the Transformer in this story is just a poorly written piece of Warhammer plus Transformers crossover. Now, fun fact about Impactor is he sucks, and he has only ever been portrayed as dead in pretty much every piece of Transformers media, including the comics, which is the only place he's ever had a speaking role. You know who'd be into a uh, pizza named the Impactor? (laughs) Fucking Torgaradon. (laughs) Torgaradon would (laughs) impact that away, I bet you. It's the other name for the meat executioner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Tor Garadon would take his impactor pizza, roll it oh, up into basically God. a giant sort of uh, taquito sort of shape, and just kind of like feed that into his mouth in like the way you'd load a shell into a cannon. <laughs> Tor Garadon ever pooped? The answer coming up next. All right, let's get the fuck out of here, man. What a show, huh? What a hell of a show. What a show. Okay, uh, you can reach us on social media. Twitter is uh, where we've been mm-hmm. engaging a lot with listeners lately. We have. I am a... Br- uh, wait, no, I'm not Brother SRM. <laughs> You're no, Brother you SRM. Not. Do not steal my identity. That's up to the Russians to do. <laughs> I'm at DB underscore Sleazy. He's at Brother SRM. And uh, we, we tweeting about a lot of stuff. We were recently talking to our friend Andrew about what kind of colors he should use to paint his new marine chapter very excited to see uh, what he comes up with there i think he showed us a little bit of a test model want to see more andrew so uh, get on your fucking horse bud (laughs) get on your horse and paint it Uh, but twitter is not the only place you can find us you can also email us contact at 40kbatcast.com but we already talked about that campbell Mm -hmm. you're on tumblr too aren't you I am. I am. If you didn't get enough of seeing my model pictures on Twitter, you can see all of them on cam2d.tumblr.com, where I've been posting all sorts of pictures of my ultramarines, as well as that cute little griff hound I painted just recently. I would really appreciate if you took a look at that little guy. He needs the love. It's a great way to spend uh, 25 minutes. No, Tumblr is a great way to see things that aren't porn anymore. Not anymore. 
I didn't even know. Dark I times didn't even know there was porn there. I, oh, my sweet summer I child. No idea. I guess I'm just not online enough. You are not online enough. You should be like me and engage with brain poison at every possible opportunity and spend way too much time in social Speaking media. Speaking of brain poison, we technically have a Facebook group. We do at facebook.com slash 40k badcast, which is still called Cam Hammer because I can't change it. But the, yeah, I've been posting stuff there, which is along with just the typical pictures of models and some updates in the show. It's where I also will post new stuff about the show. I'll post some battle report type stuff and you can engage there if you feel like engaging there instead. And I don't have a Facebook. No, because you're smart. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, bud. Uh, you're welcome. But you can... Not only waste your time with us on the internet, but you can also waste your money <laughs> in two distinct <laughs> manners. One, shop.spreadshirt.com slash 40k badcast. You can buy our t shirts. We have two new ones that you have probably heard about by now. They are the anime and sports t shirts from Sports versus mm-hmm. Anime. I've got one the of The event each. may be over. The event may be over, but the anime never is. Yeah. Also, sports. Uh, but we have a ton of other great shirts there, and we are we're gonna have to think of something good for fucking ska versus metal. Dude, we we got time, but there's gonna be a skanking man. I assure you. <laughs> good. Another way to waste your money is go to Patreon. Our page patreon.com slash 40k backcast. We have a lot of content out there for people to listen to if they would like to. Mm-hmm. I did, I was gonna say great content, but let's be honest. It's There's us. a couple of really good, like 40k SMR. That's oh, that guy, come on. The the interview with my cat. The uh, the time where I cut out all of the ums and breaths and mouth sounds and put them into one track, and it's like what three minutes long, and it's just the worst possible thing. The best progressive 40k podcast one. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really blank stuff on there for you to <laughs> insert adjective here. Enjoy. Yeah, you. I think you will enjoy. If you enjoy the show so far, you're going to keep on doing what we do on Patreon. Uh, we've got another one coming out this month, which we need to record sometime in the next week or two, which will be. Ooh, uh, should we give it away? Give it away. Give it away now. Oh, what I got, you got to give it to your mama. What I got, you got to give gotta, it to your papa. What I got, you got to give it to your doctor. You do a little dance and then you drink a little water. Well, what we've got, you've got to get it and put it in your ears because we're going to be talking about terrible albums by bands we love yes. coming up real soon, which I think does not involve Red Hot Chili Peppers this time around. It doesn't, but they have put out some true, true stinkers. Yeah. Couple of stinkers. Ooh. Couple of stinkers over here. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we GTFO? Oh, I- I think we are good for this one. All right. Well, at the end of the episode, I generally ask Campbell to furnish us with a quote regarding the world of Warhammer 40,000. So, Campbell, please give me that Gucci stuff. The emperor will not judge you by your medals and diplomas. He will judge you by your scars. And I will judge you by how much you can lift. And Campbell will judge you by... He won't judge you. He's just that nice of a guy. No, I, this is a judgment-free zone. Please, enjoy enjoy yourself. All right, gang. Thanks for listening. We're the 40K Badcast. We're about at 40K. You can, too. And we'll see you in the next cartoon.